Hello students, how are you all? Welcome to Affairs Cloud, Learn to Lead. My name is Vikas Rana. So students, we have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through the Play Store for Android phones. Once you have downloaded and logged in with your Gmail ID, you will be transferred to your home page where you can see all the courses that are offered by us. Once you have purchased the course, you can see your courses in the My Course section. But why our courses are so better? Why we think we provide you one of the best content? Because we provide you content on daily basis. In the daily basis, we provide you current affairs with 20 questions quiz as well as the PDF of the current affairs of daily. Then similarly for weekly, on weekly basis, we provide you current affairs PDF as well as a 50 questions quiz that will help you to revise all the content that you have learned. Then on monthly basis also, we provide you top 100 current affair questions PDF that will be the compiled PDF of the 100 questions of that particular month that will be very helpful for you. And not just this friends, we provide you in English as well as in Hindi too. So both English and Hindi students can enjoy our courses. Apart from this friends, we also provide you banking related question answers, the banking related MCQ questions, the quizzes that will help you prepare for the bank exams. Not just that friends, we provide you a new way of learning that is your infotainment infographics that is a different and interesting way of learning. Apart from this, we cover 20 topic wise current affairs. These topics are important such as apps portals, important days, books and authors days, uh, national affairs, international affairs, sports, defense, all these topics, these are highly important and questions from these particular topics are asked. Also, we cover state-wise current affairs also that will help you to prepare for your state exams. Also friends, as I told you, if you use the code VIKAS10, you will be given extra 10% discount on the purchase you make. If you have any problem regarding login and your application, then you can contact us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com this is our email id and you can contact us on our mobile phone that is 9677 hello students how are you all i hope you are all good so students in this video we will be discussing important current affairs of 13th of december the session will be very important and interesting so do pay attention till the end friends we'll start with some revision current affairs first is when do we observe human rights day we observe this day on 10th of December. And if I ask you when we observe National Constitution Day, it is observed on 26th of November. When do we observe Republic Day? It is on 26th of January. And what is the difference between National Constitution Day and your Republic Day? On National Constitution Day, your constitution was completed. All right. And it was implemented on 26th of January. Next is ISRO. ISRO has recently successfully completed the hypersonic vehicle trials. All right. What is difference between hypersonic and supersonic? The difference is when a object is traveling faster than the speed of light, it is supersonic. And when it is traveling five times more than five times the speed of light, it is hypersonic. The speed of light is equal to one Mach. All right, so if we are saying that it is traveling at the speed of 5.4 Mach, that means it is traveling at 5.4 times the speed of sound, not light, sound. Next is Huron Global 500 list. This was recently released by Huron Research Institute. And in this particular ranking, there were 500 top 500 firms all around the world. And in this top 500 firms, there were 20 Indian firms and in this 20 Indian firms only remember Reliance Industries Limited has secured the top position with 202 billion dollar valuation and they stood at 34th position in this particular list. Next, next is TB. What is TB? Tuberculosis. So recently it was Meghalaya that was awarded for TB control program. Important take a note of it. I repeat. It was Meghalaya that was awarded for the TB control program. That is your tuberculosis control program. Next comes your India's GDP expected to grow at 5.1% in the fiscal year 24 as per the Nomura. All right. This fiscal year 24 says states that fiscal year 2023 to 2024. So remember it was India's GDP that is being expected to grow at 5.1% in the fiscal year 20. 
all right next next is your roshni what is roshni roshni is a punjab national bank's affordable loan scheme that was named roshni that is specifically for tier 1 and tier 2 cities here home loans will be provided to the people between 5 to 30 lakh rupees at an affordable cost next next is india is planning to add 145 gigawatts of renewable energy that is the energy that is generated through solar energy wind energy geothermal energy all right energy that can be renewed with time so remember in the next five years that is from the year 2022 to 2027 india will be adding 145 gigawatts of renewable energy and this from 145 gigawatts of energy 75 percent of this will be solar energy all right then if we talk about kerala kerala became the first state to become 100 percent renewable energy based state and their target is to become shift to complete renewable sources of energy by 2040 and they plans to become carbon neutral by the year 2050 next is your 55th edition of the submarine day when do we observe this it is observed on 9th of december the 55th edition of the submarine day next is your international anti-corruption day when do we observe this it is on 9th of december that we observe international anti-corruption day moving on to elon musk elon musk have various companies that we know that is neuralink boring company all right starlink tesla spacex and now even twitter is owned by elon musk so remember recently the company spacex of elon musk has recently launched 40 satellites and these 40 satellites were of one web one web is a communication based satellite company that is based out of united kingdom in previous months isro also launched some satellites of one web into space all right and one web is a communication based rival company of spacex one web all right next so these were your revision current affairs friends now let's move on to the today's important current affairs that you need to remember first is prime minister narendra modi has recently laid the foundation stone and has dedicated nation uh, has dedicated project worth 75000 crore rupees to nation in maharashtra all right he inaugurated the phase 1 of the hindu balasab thakre maharashtra smriddhi mahamarg in nagpur connecting nagpur and shridhi covering a distance of 520 kilometers and it is expected to be built around with rupees 55000 crore rupees then apart from this pm narendra modi also dedicated to the nation aims nagpur that is all india institute of medical science nagpur that is a 150 acre campus that is being built with a cost of around 1575 crore rupees all right highly important who is the chief minister of maharashtra eknath shinde and if you remember Sanjay Gandhi National Park, Panch National Park, Chandoli National Park, they all are located in Maharashtra only. Next, next is recently Prime Minister Narendra Modi also inaugurated the first phase of the Greenfield International Airport that is in Mopa, Goa. Highly important friends, I repeat recently Greenfield International Airport that is in North Goa, Mopa was also inaugurated by prime minister narendra modi this airport is being built at around 2870 crore rupees and the foundation stone was led by prime minister narendra modi in 2016 it's goa's second international airport beside the existing airport at dublin in goa all right also as an honor to the late goa's chief minister manohar parikar this particular airport that is your greenfield international airport will be named as manohar international airport also prime minister narendra modi addressed the 
सेरेमनी ऑफ द नाइन्थ वर्ल्ड आयुर्वेद कॉन्फ्रेंस दिस थी वॉज बेस्ड ऑन द थीम ऑफ द नाइन्थ डब्ल्यू ए सी दैट इज योअर वर्ल्ड आयुर्वेद कांग्रेस एंड आरोग्य एक्सपोर्ट वॉज आर आयुर्वेदा फॉर वन हेल्थ आई रिपीट इफ यू रिमेंबर सो टू थिंग्स रिगार्डिंग गोवा वन इज ग्रीन फील्ड इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट इन मोपा गोवा हैज बिन रिसेंटली इनोग्रेटेड एंड दिस एयरपोर्ट विल बी नेम्ड आफ्टर द लेट गोवा चीफ मिनिस्टर मनोहर पारेकर एंड दिस एयरपोर्ट विल बी नेम्ड एज मनोहर इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट एंड सेकेंड थिंग दैट प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ऑल्सो एड्रेस द नाइन्थ वर्ल्ड आयुर्वेदा कांग्रेस एंड इट वॉज बेस्ड ऑन थीम दैट इज आयुर्वेदा फॉर वन हेल्थ दिस इज द थीम दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर एंड वी नो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट गोवा साउज ऑफ फेस्टिवल इज ऑब्जर्व हेयर एंड इन गोवा ओनली नेशनल म्यूजियम फॉर कस्टम एंड जी एस टी इज ऑल्सो लोकेटेड हु इज द करंट चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ गोवा प्रमोद सावंत All right. Next, next is women biggest user of public transport in India as per the report released by World Bank. And if you remember, even women traveling in Delhi have free passes. That means they don't have to pay any amount if they are traveling in Delhi using the public transport. That is the bus. So recently, it was your World Bank that released a report that was. toolkit on enabling gender responsive urban mobility and public spaces in india this report was released by world bank and under this report it stated that women are among the most frequent users of public transportation in india that accounts for around 84% of all the women journeys the absence of an inclusive design in addition to affordability and a lack of safety has an impact on women's presence in public areas and labor force participation in india which was 22% in 2019 to 20 also remember india has one of the lowest female labor force participation rates in the world that is just at 2% in 2020 to 2021 and what is the reason given here because of this that is the lack of safety and affordability all right who released this report it was released by world bank and remember if we are talking about world bank who is the president david robert malpass and where is the headquarter it is in washington dc and if you remember in washington dc only international monetary funds headquarter is also located next next we are talking about indo corpat remember recently it was india and indonesia that conducted an exercise that is corpat corpat stands for coordinated patrol as is the name suggests corpat c o r is for your coordinated and p a t stands for patrol so india indonesia corpat that is india indonesia coordinated patrol exercise was conducted between india and indonesia this coordinated patrol exercise was conducted between the indian navy and indonesian navy of these two countries this was held from or this exercise is being conducted from it is ongoing exercise that is it is from 8th of december to 18th of or 19th of december this exercise will be conducted another important thing to remember is that this is the 39th edition of this indo india indonesia coordinated patrol exercise that is held between the navy so three four things that you need to remember first it is the 39th edition it is held between india and indonesia it is uh, the conducted between indian navy and indonesian navy and remember this is taking part from 8th of december to 19th of december then this exercise will be executed along the international maritime boundary line that is imbl all right and this corpet will conduct in a also will conclude briefly that means this exercise will conclude that will end at a port blair andaman and nicobar islands all right highly important here you can see 39th edition corpet exercise between indian navy indonesian navy from 8th to 19th of December twenty twenty two. Another thing that you need to remember here is that in this Indian naval ship Karmuk took part highly important. All right, 
and the Indian Navy is engaging various countries in this IUR to enhance the regional maritime security as a part of India's vision that is Sagar and Sagar stands for Sagar and growth for all in the region. All right. Another thing, remember this Indo corporate ex uh, this India and Indonesia corporate exercise that is between India and Australia has been carried out twice a year. That means they are being carried out twice a year since 2002. All right. And the aim as we discussed is to keep the Indian Ocean region safe and secure. All right. And in this in 2022, it was the 34th edition of this exercise. Next come to finance, banking and finance. Recently, it was HDFC Bank that has partnered with a startup India to launch sixth Parivartan startup grants. I repeat, it was HDFC Bank in partnership with Government of India's flagship initiative that is Startup India and they have launched what the sixth edition of the Parivartan startup grants that is the annual grants program for social startups. What is the main aim of this program? The main aim here is to identify startups that are working towards social impact and to support them through monetary grants to their incubator. That means in order to provide them funding so that they can grow towards making a social impact and to support those startups, the monetary, monet, uh, monetary grant will be provided to them. And this has been done by HDFC Bank that has partnered with Parivartan Startup or uh, that has partnered with India's Startup India Initiative. All right, that is the initiative of Government of India. And they have launched the sixth edition of the Parivartan Startup Grants that will be providing monetary help to all those startups. These grants have been offered under the ages of Parivartan, the umbrella name for the HDFC Social initiative all right then if we talk about this particular program the bank has been enabling startups through its state of the art startup smart program smart up program all right as we say see this is the parivartan smart up program grant grant means monetary help so as the name suggests easily you can remember it was hdfc bank that has tied up with Parivartan Smartup Grants and with the help of this, they will be providing monetary help to the startups. Alright, here you can see until now, HDFC Bank has dispersed over 30 crore rupees to more than 45 incubators which support around 165 startups working in the areas of environment, agribusiness, ed tech, waste management, healthcare and skill development sectors. Also remember here HDFC Bank will focus on building these incubators and startups that are working in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. Alright, then if we talk about HDFC Bank who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Shashidharan Jagdishan is the current Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, Headquarter is in Mumbai, Maharashtra and it was established in 1994. Next, next, who is the Vice President of India? M. Venkya Naidu ji. Alright, so remember recently Vice President M. Venkya Naidu has been awarded with the SIES award for the public leadership. Now, what is this SIES and which edition of this SIES award was awarded? So remember, Vice President of India was awarded with the 25th edition of of the SIES award and what is SIES that is your Sri Chandrasekhar Saraswasti National Eminence Award. I repeat Sri Chandrasekhar Saraswasti National Eminence Award. This is the award that was the 25th edition of this award that was conferred to Prime Vice President M. Venkya Naidu ji. And remember this award was provided for in which category for public leadership all right highly important you have to remember this next is apart from this apart from m venkya naidu arif mohammad khan was awarded with uh, who is the governor of kerala was also the awardees in various categories ratan tata and amnist and was also awarded ajay sood or right vishaka hari who is also a 
हरि कथा आर्टिस्ट है वॉज ऑल्सो अवॉर्डेड विद सर्टेन अवार्ड्स ड्यूरिंग दिस अवार्ड सेरेमनी बट इफ वी स्पेसिफिकली टॉक अबाउट एम वेंकैया नायडू जी हु इज द वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया ही इज द थर्टींथ वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया ही इज टेन्योर वॉज विल बी फ्रॉम इलेवेंथ ऑफ ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी सेवनटीन टू इलेवेंथ ऑफ ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू देन रिमेंबर अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस हु इज द न्यू वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया नाउ ही विल बी जगदीश धनखड़ जी और राइट जगदीप धनखड़ इज द न्यू वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड ही इज द फोर्टींथ वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया सो क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट इज दैट हु इज द फॉर्मर वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया हु रिसीव्ड एस आई ई एस अवार्ड फॉर पब्लिक लीडरशिप इट ही विल बी एम वैंक्यू नायडू जी नाउ द क्वेश्चन कैन ऑल्सो बी आस्ट इन सच अ वे दैट विच नंबर ऑफ वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया रिसीव द एस आई ई एस अवार्ड ही वॉज द थर्टींथ वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया हु रिसीव दिस एस आई ई एस ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ एडिशन ऑफ दिस एस आई ई एस अवार्ड और राइट देन क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट दैट दिस एस आई ई एस अवार्ड दिस इज वॉट दिस अवार्ड इज जनरली गिवन एनुअली इन द फील्ड ऑफ पब्लिक सर्विस कम्युनिटी लीडरशिप साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सोशल थिंकर्स एंड द इंटरनेशनल कैटेगरी और राइट सो इम्पॉर्टेंट अवार्ड डेफिनेटली यू नीड टू रिमेंबर then moving on to the next next is we are talking about appointments sukhvinder singh sukhu took the oath as the 15th chief minister of himachal pradesh highly important friends sukhvinder singh sukhu took oath to become the 15th chief minister of himachal pradesh highly important also remember he will be the 15th edition of the chief minister of himachal pradesh this ceremony was held in shimla all right then also remember question can be asked that Shif, uh, sukhvinder singh he will replace or he will succeed whom he will succeed the current chief minister jay ram or the former chief minister jay ram thakur now all right highly important also remember he is the first कांग्रेस चीफ मिनिस्टर इन हिमाचल प्रदेश फ्रॉम द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द स्टेट दैट कंप्राइसिस कंगड़ा बिलासपुर ऊना एंड हमीरपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स। और राइट देन क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट हु इज द न्यू चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश सुखविंदर सिंह सुखू ही सक्सीडेड हुम ही विल सक्सीड जयराम ठाकुर और राइट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज भूपेंद्र पटेल भूपेंद्र पटेल हैज टेकन ओट टू बिकम द न्यू चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ गुजरात द बीजेपी दैट इज भारतीय जनता पार्टी लीडर भूपेंद्र पटेल वॉज स्वॉन इन बाय गवर्नर आचार्य देवरत एज द एटींथ चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ गुजरात और राइट दिस सेरेमनी वॉज हेल्ड इन गांधीनगर गुजरात एंड इन रिसेंटली गुजरात असेंबली इलेक्शन वॉर हेल्ड एंड इन दिस देर वॉज अ सर्टेन दैट बीजेपी हैज वन द इलेक्शन और राइट नाउ भूपेंद्र पटेल विल सर्व एज द चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट गुजरात फॉर सेकेंड ईयर इन अ रो ही वॉज सोन इन एज द चीफ मिनिस्टर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन थर्टींथ ऑफ सेप्टेंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन बाय रिप्लेसिंग विजय रूपानी लेट स्टेट और राइट एंड रिमेंबर द बीजेपी हैज वन द रिकॉर्ड सेवेंथ टाइम इन रिसेंटली कंक्लूडेड गुजरात असेंबली इलेक्शन और राइट हेयर इन दोज इलेक्शन यू रिमेंबर Uh, out of total 182 seats legislative assembly seats bjp acquired 156 whereas congress won 17 seats and aam aadmi party just won 5 seats all right then one another thing chief minister is appointed by whom so always remember chief minister is appointed by the governor and remember this comes under an article that is article 164 that state is states that chief minister shall be appointed by the governor all right friends so very important news next is also appointment pt usha pt usha that is an retire retired indian track and field athlete very famous athlete pt usha as you can see her in the picture she has been now recently is elected as the president of indian olympic association highly important news 
all right so who has been appointed as the president of the indian olympic association she will be pt usha all right then if we talk about this pt usha a retired indian track and field athlete has been named as the first women president of indian olympic association she also became the first olympian and first international medalist to head the ioa in the 95th year old history she also became the first sports person after maharaja yadavindra singh to serve as the president of ioa also he served as the ioa president from 1938 to 19 60 all right highly important friends mark this this is an important uh appointment that you need to remember if we talk about pichusha she used to be known as by the name pioli express she is from which state she is from kerala all right and she is also the winner of four asian gold medals seven silver medals all right highly important then if we talk about ioa that is your indian olympic association it was established in 1927 all right this was founded by whom or who was the founding president he was dorab ji tata ji and uh, where is the headquarter of this new delhi so who has been appointed as the new president of the indian olympic association as you can see here in the picture pt usha she is from kerala and she is a very famous athlete all right and now she is the president of ioa moving on next prasar bharti additional director sunil has now been unanimously elected as the vice president of the asia pacific broadcasting union for a term of 3 years as you can see in the in the picture prasar bharti additional director general sunil has now been appointed as the vice president of the asia pacific broadcasting union and his term will be for 3 years all right here you can see sunil shetty uh, sunil not shetty <laughs> sunil shetty is a actor all right so sunil is currently working is currently the additional director general of the prasar bharti and the head of the international relations marketing global distribution central archives and external service division of all india radio he is the president of the broadcasting engineering society of india since april 2021 he graduated with a masters in the management and has an experience of over 33 years in broadcasting he also has good experience in installation or broadcasting projects in india and overseas and now he has been elected as the vice president of the asia pacific broadcasting union for term of 3 years all right next here you can see he is also the recipient of iete sn mitra memorial award in 2016 and in february 2020 one he has also won the abu broadcast excellence award of 2018 and if we talk about abu that is your asia pacific broadcasting union uh who is the president masakaki sutaru who will be the vice president now sunil and where is the headquarter kuala lumpur malaysia this was established in 1964 next next we will be talking about an acquisition it is Dalmia Cement has recently acquired the assets of the JP Group for five thousand six hundred and sixty-six crore rupees. I repeat, JP Group have signed a binding agreement to sell its cement business to Dalmia Cement Limited, an enterprise value of six five thousand six hundred and sixty crore rupees. The disinvestment includes cement plants with an aggregate capacity of nine point four million ton. highly important all right next next we are talking about spacex recently spacex has launched a private mission to moon with along with japanese lander and uae's rover so remember on 11th of december spacex rocket was launched to the moon by a private japanese startup that is i space all right iSpace is the name of the Japanese space startup that launched the SpaceX rocket on 9th 11th of December. This iSpace aims 
टू लैंड आर लूनर रोवर फ्रॉम यूनाइटेड अरब एमरेट्स एंड अ जैपनीज रोबोट ऑन द मून नियर साइड द रॉकेट वॉज लॉन्च फ्रॉम आई स्पेस हकूटो आर मिशन एटॉप अ स्पेस एक्स फेल्कन नाइन रॉकेट फ्रॉम केप कैनरेवल स्पेस स्टेशन फ्रॉम फ्लोरिडा All right also remember this i space is one of the first private companies to attempt such a mission next next is kenneth powell as you can see him in the picture he was an olympian and a 1970 asian games relay bronze winner he has recently passed away at the age of 82 in bangalore karnataka all right remember him highly important question can be asked then next is international mountain day on 11th of december we observe international mountain day next if we talk about this international mountain day you need to remember the theme that is women move mountains and this day that is the 11th of december is observed as international mountains day across the globe by un moving on next is 11th of december is also observed as unicef day this united nation children's fund day is annually observed across the globe on, on 11th of december to mark the creation of unicef by the united nation general assembly on 11th of december 1946 and remember in 2022 this was the 75th anniversary of the foundation of unicef where is the headquarter of unicef it is in new york usa Next is International Day of Neutrality. It is observed on twelfth of December, and this day is observed to raise the public awareness of the importance of neutrality in the international relations. All right. And the first edition of this day was observed in the year two thousand seventeen. Then next comes your international. Universal Health Coverage Day that is observed on twelfth of December only, and this day is observed to create awareness about the need for strong and resilient health systems and universal health coverage with multi-stakeholder partners. Here, the theme that you need to remember is build the world we want a healthy future for all. I repeat, build the world we want a healthy future for all is the theme of the. International Universal Health Coverage Day that is observed on twelfth of December. Then next, let's talk about some states news. Recently, National Investment and Infrastructure Fund Limited, that is your NIIFL, has collaborated with Tamil Nadu government to develop infrastructure opportunities. I repeat, in order to develop infrastructure opportunities. to help attract commercial capital into infrastructure opportunities in tamil nadu recently a partnership was signed under ppp model that is your public private partnership model and in this it was nii fl that has collaborated with tamil nadu government for the same here seven projects across seven departments have been identified with a potential investment ranging from 5000 to 6000 crore rupees all right and the work on these projects has already been started if we talk about nii fl remember where who uh, when was this established nii fl it was established in 2015 all right and if we talk about tamil nadu infrastructure development board or we can say if we talk about tamil nadu who is the chief minister here mk stalin is the current chief minister and the headquarter of this tamil nadu infrastructure development board is in chennai tamil nadu all right so that's all for the day friends now let's go for a quick revision pm modi has laid the foundation stone and dedicated 11 projects worth 75000 crore rupees in maharashtra pm also inaugurated the first phase of greenfield international airport in mopa goa and he this airport will be named after the former chief minister of goa and he will be the name of the airport will be manohar international airport world bank recently released a report that women are the primary users of public transportation in india navies of india and indonesia took part in the 39th edition of the indo uh, indonesia corporate petrol exercise 
then hdfc bank has partnered with startup india to launch the sixth parivartan start smartup grant former vice president venkaiah naidu has received the 25th sies award for the public leadership sukhvinder singh sukhu took oath as the 15th chief minister of himachal pradesh next is bhupendra patel took took the oath as the second consecutive time as the chief minister of gujarat and he became the 18th chief minister of gujarat pt usha elected as the first women president of the indian olympic association next is prasar bharti's adg sunil has been elected to become the vice president of the asia pacific broadcasting union then ruling nepali congress party won the most seats and sher bahadur dubey to be remain as the pm dalmia cement will acquire cement assets of jp group for 5666 crore rupees spacex has launched a private mission to moon and nasa's orion completed the first flight around moon indian olympian and arjun awardee kenneth powell has passed away international mountain day on 11th of december next is your unicef day on 11th of december then international day of neutrality on 12th of december and international universal health coverage day on 12th of december then nii fl signed an mou with tamil nadu government for infra projects so these are your important current affairs friends that's all for the day thank you now it's time for your homework section the first question is sukhvinder singh sukhu was sworn in as the chief minister of which state second which city will host the g20 development working group meeting third mesiotropis pellita that was patwa which was added to the iucn red list belongs to which species fourth what is the theme of the world soil day important next where is india's first carbon neutral farm located so these are your five homework question friends if you find any difficulty comment below and let us know what are your views on such sessions and do like the video also if you are new to our channel and you are watching our video for the first time all you have to do is subscribe to our channel so that's all for the day friends thank you and have a nice day that's all for the day friends i hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the youtube channel as well as apart from youtube channel you can go and follow us at affairs cloud telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 7677333862 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official in the end friends if you use a code that is vikas10 you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code vikas10 also if you have any problem regarding the course purchase any problem regarding to our application you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862 and if you want to mail us you can also mail us on support@affairscloud.com and i assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue